Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTT211 Week 1 Project for the Stock Refinishing and Metalworking Lab. It's a continuation course for the muzzleloader lab that we uh, did a few weeks back. Uh, we're picking up basically around page 30 in the guide here. Uh, this is a four week course. This is the first week of four. Uh, this week we're going to be staining the stock and um, you know buffing and cleaning the brass which we kind of already started in our last one. So um, the book advises not to go past Oh, what does it say? Not to go past um, 320 or 400 grit. Um, I disagree. It's brass, it should be shiny. So uh, you can make yours dull if you want to, or you can buy that blacking compound or whatever that uh, turns brass black. And, and I might do that eventually uh, just to kind of give it, what I'd like for this in the end is for this rifle to look like a well-maintained older rifle. Um, I've already started kind of buffing up and cleaning my brass, which, you know, it's, it's real shiny. It's basically mirror polish already. Uh, so there just needs a little bit of cleaning. Um, I still need to do the ends of my ramrod so we'll do that on video so you can see what I what it is how you take it from kind of this dull yellow color to this mirror mirror finish color and ignore fingerprints because it's gonna have fingerprints on it until I get it all cleaned up then we're gonna do our final polishing um, using one of two different products here we've got some Brasso um, and some never dull and if you did any time in the military uh, prior to probably 2005 you know exactly what those are so uh, for stain wise uh, the school sends us uh, minwax gun stock okay uh, this is a very light, very red color, and uh, it's not really the look that I want for my particular rifle. I thought about doing a traditional stain, but again, I didn't really want that real light, real red color, which is kind of the traditional. Um, I am going to take some red mahogany, which is a much darker, uh, browner look, and I'm going to mix it with my uh, gun stock and hopefully create kind of a unique one-off dark color, uh, darkish red that will go on here. Um, I'm also going to be using pre-stain. Um, I found that using a pre-stain wood conditioner, especially for something that you want to look super nice is a good deal. It, it, uh, it makes the stain more even um, with less coats. They gave us some browning. This is for the next uh, weeks or whatever when it comes to the barrel, so we're not worried about that. Um, one thing I've done since the last class is I've purchased uh, brass screws to replace all of the um, blued screws. So basically these will replace in all of the brass pieces instead of this being a, like a blued screw, it'll be brass. Got that at uh, Ace hardware, so shouldn't have a problem doing that. Um, finally, this week we'll be doing the true oil um, to finish off our stock. I'm going for a semi gloss, not really a satin, but not a high gloss, just basically like a uh, uh, nice looking finish that's going to be on there. We'll see how it turns out. So. Uh, if I've got black on my face already, that's from doing the brass. I'll get more on it when we get out there to doing the rest of this. So, but that being said, enjoy the ride. All right, we're out at the shop. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, buffing out these uh, brass pieces. So you can see it's kind of a dull yellow, a little bit of scratch in there. I haven't really touched this thing up too much with uh, sandpaper, so. 
Uh, we'll kind of show you what happens when we go from just how it came from the factory. There's the other side. So you can see that there's no trickaroos. I'm gonna do it, there we go. So that's how it came. All right. Uh, all I'm using is a buffing wheel with uh, TC6 Tripoli, which is the, let's see if I can show this thing to you. So when you buy buffing compounds, there's usually like a little guide on there. And you can see on this one, step one to remove scratches, right? Which is step one. So if we come over here, you can see that's the firm buffing wheel with a TC6, which is what we got. So that's where we're at with step one, okay? comes in a little bar like this that's black from the brass. So we'll just plug in our makeshift buffer here. And you can see there, now we've got like a mirror finish on that top part. And here we go. Now we got that mirror polish there. Comparing that to that. So that's what one side looks like. That's what the other side looks like. shine on that part okay so that's how I did all of it so it's nice nice and smooth gets out the little scratches makes it nice and clean and shiny and there we go so next thing I'm going to show you we have the stock ready to uh, start going through our process I'll move the camera in a second um, when you go in to hang up your stock, I have seen people hang it from that little ring right there. Okay, don't do that. Look, just put a little screw right in the end. That part gets hidden by the brass, brass cap anyway, so it ain't gonna hurt anything. Put a little screw there, and then you'll be able to apply stuff to the whole thing without having to worry about any problems or whatever, so. There you go, tip of the day, boom. We're supposed to give this about 15 minutes and then wipe it dry and then the stain has to go on within two hours so basically as soon as we wipe it dry we'll go mix the stain and then we'll apply it uh, red mahogany and the gun stock that the school sent us same brand same everything just different colors We've got this little piece of pine here that I went ahead and treated with the pre-stain. And I am just going to, I'm gonna really eyeball this just about as much as eyeballing can get. There's zero science going into this. Super red. Okay. 
This is the red mahogany. Still red, much more, much more brown. We're going somewhere in the middle here. it up a little bit but I don't know if we lightened it quite as much as I wanted. Got a little bit more of the red in there. That's that where we were looking. Basically, after a couple of coats, I should get the gun stock in a more aged tone. So if you can see here, we have this kind of dark brown and a reddish brown and then this red. And I think that reddish brown is more the tone that I'm looking for. Now, obviously this color isn't exact to what's gonna be on there. This is pine, that's maple over there, um, but they're both light woods and it should, should be similar. So we're gonna go with this. This is gonna be our mixture. We'll call it old gun stock instead of the new gun stock like we got here. And if we uh, don't like it, you know, after we dye a layer or two, if we want to take it a layer darker, we can always put a, another layer over the top. So anyways, this is what we're gonna go with. Um, so we'll go ahead and get to staining.
All right, I am satisfied with this color. This is, I think, oh, I'm not sure how many coats. Like four or five, six different coats of stain. Um, I started alternating between uh, some of the red and some of the red mahogany, or some of the gunstock and some of the red mahogany. Uh, what I wanted and what I ended up with was kind of a dark uh, color with, with just some hints of red in it. Uh, now I'm gonna take some 4 aught steel wool and I'm just going to basically buff this out. Um, I've done this between a few of the layers now and I'm just trying to get a nice smooth finish and then I gotta run to the store and pick up some um, mineral spirits and we're gonna dilute the true oil and then we're going to apply it uh, to the gun stock. So that being said, we'll go ahead and fast forward through me buffing this out. For our first coat of the Birchwood Casey True Oil, we're going to dilute it. And we're going to dilute it um, at like a one to one and a half to two ratio. So I'm just gonna put some down on the bottom there. And I might do one or two coats of this, so I'm just gonna one to two ratio there. And with all the true oil, um, we're gonna apply everything. This lighter coat I'll probably apply with a rag. Um, after this, when we get to the heavier coats, I'll just use my hands. Um, I'll probably use my hands for this one too. We'll go ahead and move that over there and we'll rub her down. All right. You know, projects like this, they teach you about yourself as much as they teach you about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I hate doing the same thing over and over again. And this is, this is becoming a, you know, an exercise in patience. Um, so I did two layers of the diluted true oil and I've done one full strength layer of the true oil. Uh, now I am going to wet sand this with some 600 grit. Um, all the videos that I watch, they all say that this is supposed to create kind of a wood filler type effect on this. Uh, we'll see. But basically I'm just going to wet sand over the top of this. It's already pretty smooth. Um, I don't really feel anything, you know, from the true oil. The true oil is weird too, if you've never messed with it. It's not oil, it's like oil and lacquer mixed together. And so the oil penetrates and the lacquer hardens and you end up with kind of a, a protective coat over the top of this as well. So that's really what we're sanding is the protective coat, the lacquer part of this. So. So we're just gonna real lightly kind of go over the whole thing and fast forward.
Okay, there we have it. It's all been taken down uh, to by 600 grit wet sanding. Uh, that's probably gonna be the last time I do any wet sanding on it. What I'll do next time after the next coat dries is the four aught steel wool and just kind of give it something to adhere to between. So I'm gonna go ahead and hang this back up. Uh, make sure that it's, once it's dry dry, then I'll go ahead and uh, start adding more layers of the true oil. And again, you do the true oil with your hand. This stuff, you gotta get it off your hands quick after you apply, cause it, it does turn to a, like a sticky lacquer. Um, but yeah, so far I think this is looking pretty good. I think this is one of those cases where, uh, you know, it looks worse before it looks better. And uh, what we just did obviously made it look a little worse because we sanded it back down. But I think now we have an even smoother finish uh, and something for the true oil to adhere to. So I think our next couple of coats, we're gonna start to really see this thing shine up, so. Um, I'm starting to get some good shine on here. However, it's got kind of a rough feeling and I can see a couple spots where I probably got too thick and a couple spots where some hair got stuck in it. So I'm going to take this quadruple lot, four lot steel wool, four zero steel wool and kind of buff this down and see if I can't get two more layers on this today. And then we will uh, we'll be finished, I think.
All right, we're back, and this is the finished product. There is three or four different layers of the full strength true oil, and two layers of the um, like three quarter strength true oil. This is it's got probably five or six layers of stain alternating between the red and the red mahogany or the gunstock and the red mahogany. I dig in the color that it ended up with. I think it has a, it doesn't really look as red on the camera, but it has just a red hue underneath the brown. Um, if you don't like this shine, you can take that back down with just a, uh, you know, uh, some emery cloth or like um, that four aught steel wool, just real lightly, you can kind of take it back down. I'm gonna leave it for now. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the brass back onto it, so. All right, we've got it back together. Uh, I did change out a few things. Um, these are brass pins now, so they'll match the brass pins. Uh, the screws are all brass now. are on there so all together I'm really digging the color I'm really digging how it looks they will I think they're gonna have us plum brown the barrel which they gave us some express brown um, formula I'm not sure how I feel about that this front piece right here Looks like it's case hardened. It's kind of blued and case hardened. And the triggers are like blued color and all the screws are like blued color, you know? So it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to go with like a plum brown barrel. I know that that's, you know, kind of traditional for this style of rifle. However, uh, I think I might try to do, might try to turn that brown into a dark blue um, color so uh, everything's working you got your set and your fire so that completes this week thanks